Hey, what's the leading cause of dry skin? I don't know. Towels. <laughs> oh my god. I hate that. I like that one. No, I like that. I like that. <laughs> Welcome to episode 39 of Bros, Bumps, and Beers. I am Pat, the EST of Triple B Gagne. He is Matt Tooties Gagne. And of course, our producer, Jordan, the Jackhammer Schofield. Welcome, gentlemen, episode 39, the ugliest of all the numbers. How are we this fine evening? 39 ugliest? I just don't like it. It's I don't just... think so. I would I would say like for me it's like 40 41. That's a, Look, yeah, I was going to say 39 is very curvaceous. Let let's let's say mm. let's say it like this. This is a weird math. I used to be a math teacher. 39 looks like it should be a prime number, but it's not. It's not. But it is divisible not. by 3, which makes yeah. it divisible? Is that is that how you say it in English? I, we have a couple math teachers that listen to this so they can let us know. I thought it was divisible. It's not <laughs> divisible. Yeah, it's divisible, I think. Uh, yeah. I, no, I'm like genuinely asking because I, I think it is divisible. Uh, one, one small correction: I we had a discussion with a couple of our buddies that listened to this. Is do you pronounce it pecan or pecan? Um, I actually I will say I go 50 50 on it. It's kind of like sometimes it depends on like my environment and where I am. If I say pecan, you were or full pecan. on pecan last week. Was I? Oh. Yeah, I, I. It totally depends on like it. it there's so many varying factors of of you know am i high scale or low scale environment um have i had something to drink have i not had something to drink is it a tart or is it a pie you definitely had something to drink last week yeah yeah <laughs> it was uh, i was i was cooking last little bit of uh housekeeping from last week um friend of the show liz shout out liz yeah shout out liz she actually texted me and said jordan stop wasting the other half of your tomato paste her mom told her Put it in the freezer in a zip or in uh, one of those little salad uh, dressing containers. Smart. And it's good for that. She makes never wastes it. That makes a lot I know. Of she sense. told me, and I was like, huh. Thanks. What? Thank you, Liz. Yeah. Blew my mind. Yeah. Smart. See, see what happens when Liz doesn't have to ask Matt to tell a story. It goes so much better. <laughs> yeah. Works way better. Yeah. No story. She literally told me exactly what to say. Yeah. Oh. But if Liz gives Matt life advice to then pass on, perfectly detailed. Matt. Absolutely you nailed it. that. Matt, you yeah. nailed that advice right there. Nailed it, Matt. <laughs> I'm surprised Thank I didn't you. get the preferred temperature of the freezer on that one. That was so precise. <laughs> Uh, a little before we start jumping into what we want to jump into. So I would s safely say, I don't know about your family, Jordan, but I think the biggest fan of the show is Big Mike Gagne, honestly. So he calls me mm. every Sunday now. He calls me every Sunday and tries to get like a sneak peek of what we're going to talk about. Mm. First of all, Matt, our father, prime Mike Gagne this week, all week. He, okay. he called me. Before we keep going. Oh. Okay, so I was working on my son's room this weekend. I can say uh, with like complete Canadian certainty time. that my parents have not listened to one moment of this. And that might be <laughs> oh, for the okay. best. Actually. Probably for the best, yeah. Probably for the best. Here is the text exchange that happened at 718 today. Finished painting and baseboards? Question mark. I said, all done. He will be sleeping in his room tomorrow. Couple things left. Good. Perfect. That's it. You know what makes That's my producer? You know what that makes my producer heart stop when Matt decides he's going to read texts on air. Oh man, That's <laughs> because tough, that's tough Matt, work. a lot of people don't know this, but Matt leaves pretty big gaps, and I tighten them up just to make Matt sound like he's not like trying to catch his breath. And it's not that; it's just your cadence. But if you can imagine, like when people read texts, they genuinely pause, like yeah. put an exaggerated pause. So my heart skipped a beat when Matt was like, I'm going to read a text chain. Cause I was like, oh, sweet I did Jesus. A good, I get, you did, did a good you job nailed today. it. I I'm almost told it today, you, boys. I almost it said, today. tighten it up, Matt. Tighten it together. But no, you crushed <laughs> it. In the same vein of that. So Matt, on the topic of text from dad, he texted me, I think it was Tuesday. We got, we all got a, our, we go to the same gym and we all got the same email. Uh, re reinforcing that we need to respect social That's distancing. That's a nice way to mask. put it. Reinforcing. Yeah, that was, I mean, that you was, saw I mean, that yeah. might be the nicest thing I've ever heard. So he texts me and Matt, and the first thing he says is, did you get the email from the gym? <laughs> <laughs> 
Now, I don't email. think my dad knows how emails work. <laughs> if he sends, if this man sends one email to one person in the gym, everybody receives. No, Mike's the, same the only email. one who got that email. <laughs> For sure, yes. Yeah, Mike. Was very it, was a, it was a targeted attack. Mike was like, "I've never done any of this shit." <laughs> what the fuck is he? He was all marched, mad. He marched in there like a fucking. Who does he think? Like, who do you think you're talking who to? You're talking to? I'm like fucking Gagne. Speaking of that, Pat, he was stoked because oh. some personal trainer was uh, filming in the gym for her yeah. Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. They got reposted on the gym thing, and he's in the background. He's like, "Man, I, w- I was warming up there. You can't. You don't even see. I, I <laughs> look, crushed that in. I don't want. I, wanna, I, like, I don't oh want to get God. into it too much about that. She, about the person that was filming. But I walked into the gym, and there's one chair to put your shoes on. And she politely comes up to me and goes, "Um, could you please move? I'm filming right here." And I looked at her, and I'm like. No, actually, I'm just going to put on my shoes in 10 seconds, and then you can film whatever the fuck you were. You know what? How how rude of that person to not check with your dad that he's not doing his max weight at that very moment <laughs> know, she's right? filming. That's an inconsiderate. If you if if you go to a gym, I want to know up front if someone's filming that day because I am warming up outside, coming in, and just starting with the heaviest oh, yeah. shit I can You've got a pump going already. You've oh, done like 20 push-ups I'm before you even show I'm going in, and I'm like, in my head, I'm like, what's my three best exercises? Fucking military press, first thing I'm doing. Rose, second thing I'm doing. Bench press, third thing I'm doing. Yeah. Let's go and just keep so moving. The last thing with that is he called me, he FaceTimed me, and it was clearly he, it was five o'clock, so right after he finished eating supper. Um, <laughs> and so he calls me. And now, since he's reached a certain age, Matt, have you noticed that he coughs up phlegm whenever he, uh, right after he eats? Matt, I would like to apologize. He's been doing that for years. He's I know, Matt. I would like to apologize. I would like to apologize to you, Matt, because you come by it honestly. This is not your fault. The oh. <clears throat> is not your fault. This is hereditary. No, it's and hereditary. I apologize that I made fun of you for that because it comes from our father and it is the most annoying damn thing he does. So uh, moving on from making fun of Big Mike, um, Jordan, big day. Big day for you. Huge day. Baseball is back. Can't wait. Why is it just Bring a train. big day for Jordan? Because Jordan is probably the biggest I baseball fucking, fan that I oh, know. Oh, I love baseball. Baseball is like super not boring. Jordan loves that games go more than four hours. He yep, loves that love the it. season is 162 games. Yep, love it. And I he watches literally, don't. he watches from the beginning of April all the way to October without missing a game. Absolutely love that MLB um, in no way, shape, or form makes it really hard for young people to enjoy the game. You know, um, definitely don't hate that. Uh, definitely don't hate that there's more unwritten rules of baseball than written rules. So that's super not confusing or stupid at all either. So, um, Pat, I'll, I'd like to let you know that, as you know, being from the great city of Toronto, that wait, I... Wait, you're from Toronto? You're not from Toronto. Oh, I am. You're not from no, you're Toronto. Not. Oh, I am. Don't do this. No, you're not. I'll kill Where you Where are you both. from? You're from Scarborough. How dare you? I am from Pickering. <laughs> Oh, that's the one. That's Pickering. Right. I'm, that's not from, one. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not like a waste man from Scarborough. Oh, right? excuse me. From Pickering. Fuck. Okay. So, as a Torontonian, I do have to as support a Pickering the Blue Jays. As a, as a Pickering ring, 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 Ian? As a fish. There you go. As fish. a fish. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. Right near the nuclear power plant. Um, <laughs> so, basically, I do ha- support the Blue Jays. Been to a, a lot of games in my life. I will say, I'm not a diehard baseball guy. So I will weave in and out of baseball. I have decided this year that I am weaving all the way in. Um, the Jays good put year, up a, though. Good year. The Jays put up a big W. So it's important not to overreact to one game of spring training. But I can confidently say the Jays are winning the AL East, likely the World Series. And if the Yankees win 40 games, that's probably the, the maximum they're going to be. You'll be shocked, do. eh? Yeah. Over so I think straight. I can safely say after one seven-inning game of spring training baseball on the Yes Network that the Jays have this in the bag, and I shouldn't even bother watching, really. I, uh, I watched only the seventh inning and did not recognize half of the guys the Blue Jays had in. The start of the game was the a lot more played. Jays. Like, I think it was like, I would say six or seven of the usual, of like who will be their opening day. I will say... Baseball is my favorite preseason buildup because like spring training and baseball is like the chillest thing ever. The coaches get there. The managers get together and go, Hey, you know what? Let's just play seven innings today. Let's not play nine. Boone talked for to. like three fucking innings. He was talking with the yes network for <laughs> yeah. like the, from the fourth yeah. to the sixth. Yeah. But then the best part is guys get, they start the game. They get a couple at bats. They get pulled. Someone else goes in, and they don't even stick around for the end of the game. They all go golfing. They go back to the clubhouse. They don't give a shit about the game. Oh, and then yeah. they just, it's there's no maximum effort either. There's like a 
a ball that they might die for in the regular season. Aaron Judge literally yeah. did that with the first the first yeah. fucking like, batter. I think, no the fucking first way. Second. No, didn't die. You know what I love? But in preseason baseball, when they go out there and they're like, this guy's working on hitting breaking balls. They let like fastballs that are down the gut go because they're like, I knew that was a fastball. I'm waiting for the breaking stuff. Yeah. What? I know, right? just race. So what if the dude just hums three fastballs pipeline and then that's it? It's like, oh, strike that, Jack. I'd be the biggest douchebag if I played professional baseball. I'd like see that. It'd be like a, a guy who never reached higher than a ball last year coming into the game. I'd go up to the manager like, put me in, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to absolutely bomb this one and strut, bat flip, and moonwalk past home plate. And then... Because there are so many unwritten rules in baseball, they'll throw my head the first game. That, that you know what? I, I appreciate baseball for one thing, actually. I love the fact that, like, my job tends to slow down in the summer. And there's nothing that gets me more excited than realizing the Jays are playing at, like, 1 p.m. And oh. I can spend the afternoon just, like, glancing at the TV to see, like, to watch sports. So I will say that about baseball. Like, hockey, football, rugby, whatever else I watch doesn't do that. But baseball... It, you uh, you can almost set your watch to either a, a you, casual day or night game. You can sit. Down Is there and anything watch. better than a rainy summer day when the Jays play at one, and you can't go outside? Yeah, uh, a rainy summer day, and the Red Sox are playing at one. That would be better. Whatever. How do you watch those games? Um, I have the MLB Network. Shout out North End James, our buddy, our pal. He's hooking me up with the MLB Network, so watching that all day. Oh, so you're you're, you're, you're not using making his account? Oh, he's making me pay. Yeah. That's fraudulent. You know what? That's classic, James, that he would make you pay to use the MLB network. I would make him pay. Why wouldn't you make me pay? Just out of the goodness of your heart. If he's getting it anyways, why not help the boys? You know what, Jordan? This You're is not wrong. Issue. You're not wrong, Jordan. No, Jordan? no I You're would not wrong. make... Jordan, I'd make you pay double. Fuck off. I'd make you pay Whoa. double. Yeah, why would I want the MLB <laughs> network? It's hard enough to watch the Jays, and I care about them. Well, it's because their you know favorite team isn't the Jays, so they can't yeah. watch every game. Like, yeah. I don't get the, J, James doesn't get the Yes Network. I don't have Nesson. Like, Maybe I have, you shouldn't I have, I cheer that. for the Red Sox because you're standing up to your brother and your father. That's all you were doing as a child. You were rebelling. Yes. You hated that your brother and your father look alike, and you don't look like either of them. And you've acted this out, and true. you chose I the Red like Sox. I feel like this has turned into some sort of weird assault on And not my only parents. that, but this is why you have a huge truck, too. So you just can't get over your stature, and it's very upsetting. A huge truck. I don't have, have a huge truck. truck. I know. I was. I was just trying to lean into the short man syndrome <laughs> thing, but oh, I couldn't think of anything. I am else. not short. Sure. I, I am average I like, size. Hold on. Pat, I'm average. I, will, I will say hold like on. Pat. Did Pat, Pat does Pat doesn't have short man syndrome, but like I was just. I couldn't think of anything else. Thank you, Jordan. I appreciate that. I do not have short man. No, syndrome. you don't. You not are. All the you time. are average size. Not all the time. You are average size. It's just around me and Matt. You're. You're short. You guys are freaks. Like, yeah, nobody should be that tall. I feel like yeah. everybody in the world should be five foot eight and just be in the field. <laughs> no, that's, just, that's Pat, you moved to Japan fun. and you'd be a fucking giant. <laughs> well, well, you know, it doesn't make any sense. Like, you know, that Taco Fall basketball player, he's like seven foot four. Like, that's ridiculous. That is too tall. That's just not right. inconveniently oh. tall. Oh, yeah. for sure. Great all time name, though. Um, yeah. One of my favorite basketball players, and he plays like two minutes a game. It's yeah. And the, and the Boston crowd gets like all jazzed oh, up when he comes in. On the their game. feet every time he comes in the game. Like, it's garbage time, and the seven foot four guy who can't run up and down the court comes in, and the place goes bananas. I, I'm, I am, I will say, baseball, it'll be, it'll be good this year. I mean, I've, I've been on a bit of a hot streak with my favorite team, so I'm just hoping the, uh, the ride continues. Now, we talked a lot about betting on football and things like that. Baseball is not something I feel like. No, 162 bets. No, that's look, just listen. of one team. You listen, you listen here. I've I've recently discovered that you can bet on first pitch ball or strike. Shut up. <laughs> that I'm gonna bet that I'm gonna go broke betting on that. That is the most electric bet I've ever heard. Is that not the life. equivalent of me betting on every first round over under for NCAA March Madness? Like, aren't I just coin flipping? <laughs> it's it's just yeah. like you got you got to get a feel and you got to get it right in before they throw. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna first few weeks. That's all I'm gonna bet. That's, that's gonna lovely. be fantastic. I I met someone the other day who bet um on every round of the Scotties Tournament of Hearts. You can do that. Yeah, every he, game. He he bet on sorry every game of the Scotties. That's a lot of games. Yeah, that that level of give a shit for curling I've never seen before <laughs> in my entire life. I think most of the people who are in the Scotties don't care as much as that guy did. That was I couldn't believe it when I saw the dude. Like I am currently watching the final, and who's who's winning? I'm not watching enough. it. It's two two. Okay. I will say though, curling. I have no real desire to watch curling, 
but I've tried curling. I have a newfound respect for curling. That is hard as shit to do. You bend different. The the way rocks roll, like it's just the sweeping part. Of it. I ate curl. shit. Curl, Pat. Whatever. I ate <laughs> shit sweeping on the sheet. Yeah. I bled. I bled after playing curling. Okay. Did you did you sweep with a slider on? Yes. You're an idiot. Why no, no, no I didn't. No, 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 no. I was just wearing really bad shoes. I wasn't. I didn't have a. I didn't have a. No, I didn't have a slider. I was. Oh, okay. I've been. I was asked to curl once, and I feel like I was completely fooled. I just like didn't know what I was getting myself into, and by the end of the game, I was like, "You got, you got to have a newfound dying. respect for him once you do it. It's insanely dying. hard." As far as like rec sports that you can get drunk while playing, is bowling or curling the ultimate rec sport bowling. that you can? Bowling. No, curling's curling's better. I feel like you can't get hurt bowling when you're drunk. I feel like bowling, though, like bowling just has a natural air of griminess to me. There's just something, it's like not yeah. well lit. I just don't, I just don't vibe with bowling. I don't vibe with the whole, you know, like the, the bowling balls and like just the general aesthetic of bowling. I see, I, that, that shocks me because I feel like, Jordan, you're not a, you're not a finesse guy. And I feel like curling's finesse and bowling, you just hawk that fucking ball as uh, hard as you I, can. I'll let you know that <laughs> curling, curling's finesse if you play it that way or if you're <laughs> the number two because you get to throw the rock at the rocks and then all you have to do the other times is try to put your broom through the ice when you sweep. <laughs> then I would argue that it's not it's not curling at all. My goal every time I curled was to see like if I could just make the ice disappear under me while I'm sweeping it. That's how hard I try to sweep. I know it's so fun, right? You're like yeah. I'm wearing down so much, Pablo. Yeah, you're like how much faster is this going because of my spring? <laughs> <laughs> I never understood why you sweep. Why you, why the I think sweeping it's to thing matters? Straight now. Yeah, it was. Yeah, uh, and to drag it further. Because you're wearing down pebble, and then there's less friction. I had no clue that's how yeah. that works. I, physics, guys. I walked into a curling rink, and I was like, this is going to be I thought shit. it was to make it faster. Like, I understood that concept. But then, like, when they were like, well, if it goes faster, it goes straighter. I was like, oh, oh like, fucking and then, brain explosion. And then some old guy, some old guy who was wearing a windbreaker, it literally said 1975 curling champion, which was the greatest thing of all time. He has clearly worn that every day. Oh, yeah. And he's giving me pointers, and I'm like, man. How do you know this? And he's like, I, "This is all I do. I got it's it's hard." And I was like, "Yeah, you have to like spin in a certain way." It was just it was no turns and interns. Yeah, oh, curling's, what curling's, the? Uh, I, that I actually uh, know a good number of the people just from the gym I go to who are in the Scotties and will be in the Briar. Um, the Jones match today was heartbreaking. I just I just need to get it off my chest. Uh, there was a lot of missed shots down the stretch, and. It was tough because I wanted to yell at the TV, but I kind of know some of those people, and I didn't want to say some mean things about them. So, yeah. uh, it was you know you know and like or it's like you're watching maybe like a kid play, you know, and you happen to know the parents, and like the parents are kind of beside you. That's how I felt. I felt like if I yelled at the screen, they were going to be like, "What the they fuck?" They lost man? through our third cousin. This is true. That's true. the most prairies thing I ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, Jordan, where were you watching this curling? Was this in your? Your condo or your new home? It was in the it was in the upheaved combo or combo condo. Um, the why entire, is that? Why, the entire bedrooms upheaved? the entire bedrooms taken apart because we're replacing the carpet uh, tomorrow. Um, we're staging the place because we're tired of trying to sell it and failing. So I have moved back in with my parents temporarily. Um, you know, sometimes people say to go forward, you need to go back, and Ooh. I'm gonna go back. <laughs> When I'm till when I was like seven, like a kid again. So I'm in my old bedroom before I moved out. Um, now with my fiance. Um, so, you know, now, we're not we're not going to speak of that bedroom. Are you? Uh, are you? Did you guys? Did you guys notify? <laughs> Jesus! Did you guys notify both neighbors on either side that there would be another school field in the house? Okay, so. <laughs> First of all, because that's going to be the loudest house in Winnipeg. First of all, we moved just I, I have I am actually back at the condo right now recording the podcast because I what it was so loud at my parents <laughs> place because of everyone being there that I, I just knew I had to come back here. So I'm sitting in the upheaven condo and I might actually just leave. I might just come here to record because there's no fresh chance in hell that who, it's going to be quiet. Who do you think's louder? I you think that'd be sister? good podcasting, though. I mean, if it was like an in-person podcast and everyone could join, it would be a shit show. Um, I'm louder, but Sarah can be if she wants to be. Um, but yeah, no, we moved back in. Uh, the Schofield house is full bore. 
Um, most people out there won't know what that means, but you two do. Um, that means... Well, I feel if you listen to this podcast enough and just picture Jordan, but there's like four more of him. Yeah. And then Johnny's yeah. in there. Yeah. And Johnny's um, just sitting there with a smile on his face, just being Johnny. There's a lot of, there's, a, you know, a lot of yelling. To, uh, a second dog now running around. We're trying to shuffle cars. We have six cars out front. Like, it's a, it's a, going to be a tire fire. That's the only way to describe it. Here's a question. Are you going to continue to cook or are you just going to sit back and let Mom's okay, so field do at that? At first, I saw this as a lot of, the, with numerous downsides. Okay. One, I'm going to a place that doesn't have heated park or heated garage parking. Hey, my parents oh, don't poor you, right? Eh? Oh my god. I Are mean, you gonna be okay? Do you want to talk about it? I or? mean, like it's you know, when you're slumming it with the pores, like I'm worried my car's gonna get stolen first <laughs> wow. night. Um so no I, what parking. does that say about me? I don't even have a garage. What is Jordan saying about me? Pat, I'm just Ooh, a gonna... garage. Ooh, a garage. Yeah, so they have a two-car garage that's not heated. My condo had a heated underground parking, it was fantastic. You know, on the plus side, though, I'll say this at this point forward. Uh, all my meals are going to be done. Um, all the groceries are going to be purchased. Uh, we don't have to go. We don't have to take Herschel outside the condo to walk him anymore. We just let him out in the backyard. My parents also think perennially that Herschel has to pee, so he goes out there like sixty <laughs> times a day because every time he even like looks at the back door, they're like, "Oh, he's got to go out. He's got to go out." <laughs> uh, uh, as a downside, though, is because all my meals are going to be cooked, I'm about to be 250 pounds again. Like, there's no way around this. Um, the place is a – as they try to eat healthy, and it's a death trap for snacks. They tell – our pantry downstairs, my mom and my sister call it Bill's No Frills because my dad has, like, five of everything that's ever been made ever for him to get at any time. So if he's hungry – You have a pantry downstairs? Yeah, oh, he does. Yeah. I remember this. Yeah, I went yeah. in there once. Oh, right, I was, right, right. I was yeah. intoxicated, and it's it's snack heaven. He has embedded <laughs> an embedded pantry with two freezers and three mini fridges, along with a main fridge, um, for all like the drinks and shit. So it's it's essentially a party house, and that no one could go to. Yeah, that none of us. Stupid could go to. COVID. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully, um, hopefully it's temporary because we do want to move on and get into our house <laughs> at some point in the future. Um, but this does lean back into, uh, where it kind of came to the conclusion that I knew that like, I was definitely my father's son. Cause re asked me, she goes, you know, like, what's going to be like the, the thing that like, is the weirdest part about moving back in with your parents. And the only thing could come to mind is I was like, well, I guess I don't have to do groceries anymore. And she Lucky said, bastard. no, but she goes, well, why don't you could just go with your dad to do groceries. And I realized that that would be the end of our relationship. Because we are both so particular about things that he would have a certain way he'd want to do groceries and I would have a certain way. And by the time so you're we saying left, he wouldn't want to use the self checkout. Well, oh, I used it today. I used it today and all the other plebs who were waiting for, you know, Johnny doesn't give a shit and the cashier aisle to scan their stuff. And I was yeah, just so you've all you've referred to people as the poor. <laughs> yeah. Can we talk about plan. last week too? How you uh, you uh, made fun of two a uh, French people and Italian people in one beer review. It was outrageous. Yeah. And, the Germans, and the Germans. And the Germans. You made fun of the Germans. Germans too. No, I cut yeah. out the German part. Oh no, yeah. you did. Yeah, you uh, the German part wasn't allowed to make air, if you yeah. remember. The no, German. that was that was no, that was two episodes ago. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Oh, maybe I did make fun of the Germans. Yeah. Um. You know what? No one's safe. Fun of the no, one's safe. no, it's true. No safe. Like cashier number nine at superstore, he doesn't give a shit how fast he scans my groceries. You know. But if I'm there, I can. I and I think of it like Tetris. I'm trying to fit all our groceries in two green bins. All right. And if I have some jackass just like casually scanning <laughs> stuff or not giving me stuff in the right order, then I'm not going to be able to stack those things in an efficient manner. It's it's just logical, you know. See, if I one thing I would love if I can move back in with my parents is I have, I realized very quickly living by yourself, all your life is once you live by yourself is loading and unloading the dishwasher. If I have to unload the dishwasher one more time this week, I'm gonna cry because I didn't realize. And also, the glasses that I leave downstairs don't magically make their way up into the to the dishwasher anymore. That's me who does that. And then I finally realized, Matt. Yeah. Our mom would pick those up and put them away for us. Uh, mom or me. Okay, two things. One, do you take out the dishes when they're warm? Because that is a sublime feeling when you have like, it absolutely is. Yeah, I love that. Place. I love that. 
And also, um, while in my parents' place for the time I was today alone, I forgot four things in the basement. And one thing I ferociously miss about the condo is if I forgot something in another room, it was a 10-second walk. And so because the dogs can't get downstairs, I have to figure out this baby gate contraption every time I want to go downstairs. Um, get used to that. Yeah. So <laughs> I like on the fourth time, um, I went downstairs to like, I forgot my drink downstairs and I just took a new drink. So I, I think I still have a drink sitting down there on the mid table. And I was just so pissed off about having to go back down. I just didn't get it. So. Oh, all right. So uh, yeah, just a quick recap. Uh, Big Mike is technologically inept. Doesn't understand how emails work. Jordan, biggest baseball fan of all time. Matt believes they will, the Blue Jays will win the World Series, which is wrong. And uh, Jordan is... I think they have a shot. Jordan is now not only a stay-at-home bitch, but living with his parents bitch. So how about we draw, We talk about some beers, guys? Let's do that. Um, we got some interesting beers this week. Uh, Matt, why don't you lead us off this week? I would love to. Absolutely love to. Oh, boy. So, oh, he's excited. He's excited. I was told by Jordan... And then by uh, our buddy Scott, shout out Scott. And basically Scott by Hassan? anybody, no, no this is Bodner. Scott Bodner. Bodner, sorry. And basically by anyone who actually knows me as a beer drinker, that has had this beer, that I needed to try it, and I'm so happy that I texted uh, the kid I taught, who now works at the LC at Sage Creek, and was like, "Hey, do you guys have this in stock?" And he was like, "Yes, we do." And I went and picked it up. So I That's got a hell of the, a story. That's a hell of a story. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I got the Vostok, the launch from Oxus. Uh, it's a double IPA coming in at 8%. Whoa. Oh, yeah. yeah. It hits hard. And this thing, this is blackout juice. This is blackout <laughs> yes. juice because it does not have any booziness. It oh, is incredibly cool. smooth. It's danger, danger, danger. There's not even a hop, uh, like a hop bite. It's, it's hoppy, so good. It's so good. So tropical and citrusy that it's so balanced. Mm -hmm. It's black. Like it's 100% black. That's, da juice. that's danger sauce right you there. You could drink six of these very quickly and then not Wake up know the next what's morning. Going on. <laughs> yeah, essentially. Like it is. And. It has this sort of really nice mouthfeel. Like, it's it's almost like a creamy... It's almost a milkshake, but it's not. Jordan has a mouthful of food right now. I don't know what he's eating, but so I love unprofessional. It. You can't hear it until you call it out. It's probably more pe pepperoni sticks. It's, no, it's plantain tarts. Plantain tarts, okay. Yeah, plantain. my grandpa made plantain whole... Plantain tarts. Plantain. Listen, you can correct me on pecan or pecan. <laughs> You're not correcting me on plantains, all right? <laughs> Anyways, yes. I was in the middle of one yeah, of my most were, vigorous beer reviews That's your in a while. Point. And yeah, so if you follow me on Untapped at Gagne Matt, I have yet to rate this. I just drank it for the first time. I am going to give this on Untapped a 4.5. Holy uh, fuck! Wow. The reason I am not giving it a 5 is because I had something that I gave a 5 uh, on Friday. And I compared it to this, and I was like, you know what? It's missing something. I don't know what it's missing, but it's missing a little something. Vostok is that good, though. That being said, go get it. Go get it. If you, it like, if you like IPAs, if you don't like IPAs, go get it, because this will change your mind on everything yeah, it's really wow. good. in life. All right, Jordan, you're up next with something a little different. Yeah, so it's good to have uh, Brandon Manitoba now coming through in the beer review. So Black Reap Brewing. Um, I have the Blue Hills Brew. It's a blueberry ale. Uh, first sip of this, kind of got into it, got it going. And what it really is, is a really smooth ale. Um, you're not going to get like an overt blueberry fa flavor. Um, it's not like a wild blueberry. You're not thinking blueberry pie. Like, it's definitely not like a kilter blueberry, which I would say I haven't had before, but I would imagine would taste like someone took a pie and kicked it into the middle of a beer can. So this is going to be a little more along the lines of like the Lake of the Woods blueberry um, and the blueberry from um, Trans-Canada. So, you know, for me, that's a solid beer. I was probably going to give it a low threes. And I happened to look at the can again and noticed it's also 6.8%. Now, why that matters is if I hadn't looked again, I would have told you this beer was 4.5%. That's how easy and smooth it is. 
So because of that, I'm going to bump this oh. up to a 3.75 simply because this wow. is just one of those beers that like has a nice touch of fruit to it, but it's not going to be overtly fruity. Like anybody who's a beer person, if you like Paps and you like Budweiser, this could be on your list for a really solid drink, especially at 6.8%. All right, Pat, over to you. All righty. So I'll finish things out with, uh, I picked up something new from uh, these the nice little brewery in the city, La Brasserie La Shop, for all you Francophones out there. very Francophone of you. Yeah, so uh, they just put out their first stout. They put out the Night Owl, the black can. And if you look at the beer itself, very dark, very dark stout. And you know what? I'm not a stout guy. I've never claimed to be. I don't really usually enjoy stouts. And it's just a personal preference. It has nothing to do with them as beer themselves. But I will say, this Night Owl, it is very easy drinking. It is really, really refreshing. It's not heavy on the chocolate. It's uh, got some caramel notes to it. It's, what is it? It's, it's what percentage is this? This is, why can't I That'd find it? That'd be at six. Six percent. So, and it doesn't taste like that. That's, you know, La, Ch La Chape has, what, three beers now? This is their third beer, Matt? Yeah. Everything they have tastes very classic, classic tasting. It's not super outside the box. It's very steadfast. It's very... They are what they say they are. Yeah. There's nothing, there's the can is very simple and it is very solid beer. I really enjoyed it. It's, it, there's not much, uh, there's not a lot to say about it other than the fact that it's really damn good. And uh, I was going to give it a super high four, but then I remembered I am not a stout person. I don't have that authority to do it. So there you can you follow go. me. Good job. You can follow me on Untapped at Pat Gagne. Um, I'm going to give this a 3.75 out of 5. Uh, I think it's just that solid. If I was a stout person, I think I might give it a 4, but I don't have the authority to do that. Is that the highest you've ever given a stout on Untapped? You know what? I would, I, if I would count how many stouts I have on Untapped, I think it's under 10, and I would, I don't need to look. I think this might be one of the higher ones, yeah. Really? Yeah. So I, I really enjoyed it. It's just because it's easy to drink and it's not super heavy. Um, so to recap, Jordan's going to have to help me out with the recap. Uh, I get, Matt had the Oxus Voss talk. I'm saying yep. that right. Yes. Yep. Uh, yep. You can follow him at Ghani and Matt with Dose Taze. He gave it a 4.5 out of five. Uh, Jordan had the black wheat brewing blueberry ale. He gave it a 3.75, 3.75 on a tap. You can follow him at AG, AG school 55. And I rounded things out with the La Shop night owl. I gave it a 3.75 out of 5. You can follow me on a tap at Pat Gani. And now we roll it over to Jordan for the Winnipeg Beer News of the Week. Thank you, Patrick. So we're back to a long beer news this week. Uh, so we're going to start off with non-such beer, a double whammy this week from them. We have the Irish Red. Irish Red coming out before St. Patrick's Day. Uh, exactly what you'd expect from a red. Caramel, nut, and bread aromas. 5% ale. So it should be like a nice and smooth, a good amount of malty on that now they also released i don't have it in front of me on my phone here but i believe it's field called berry. the field berry thing and that i'm assuming is more of a blueberry wild berry type punch so i'm gonna have to run by the queue and grab a couple of those as i'm sure all of you know slurpee is back Who i know i back slurpee is back and i actually didn't get the time now here's the thing i'm gonna ask you guys right now you know that for me, orange, like, creamsicle, orange creamsicle, that vanilla is, like, not my cup of tea. It's, like, not even you'll, close. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Okay, so I'll have to get my hands on some of these slurpees. I purposely held off until I talked to you two because you know how I feel about Cause that. Because I, I, I'm the same as you, Jordan, and this... Mm. I know. I should have just got it because mm. it's kilter and I should know better, but um, I actually just got a shipment in from Flying Monkeys, a big shipment, and I was trying to hold off on... On ordering or buying stuff for as long as I could. Um, so, uh, in other news, Low Life Bill House, uh, they were doing another Brett IPA and they needed to let it sit another week because THP was leaning in. So, I don't know what the fuck that means, but <laughs> um, I know THP um, was a wrestler for some time. Um, was it T O T J P? Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. Almost had it. Almost, Almost had, had it. it. HJ, what's the difference? Um, all right. So moving on from that, going through a bunch of I have to scroll past a bunch of shit posts from the guys. 
Um, yep, that's what I'm scrolling past, Matt. That's an all-time shit post. Um, okay, so I, I just had this beer the other day, and I'm actually disappointed I didn't save it to review it. Uh, the Half Pints uh, pretz- uh, Chocolate Toffee Pretzel Porter, that came out of the clouds as, like, a really good porter. Like, a really, really good porter. Um, I'm not going to review it because I do actually think it's, like, right now, because I do think it's worth someone getting and reviewing on this podcast. But I will say, like, go give that a try. I was really impressed by it. Uh, Nonsuch Old ALX Bourbon Barrel. If you want to know something I'm getting, you better believe that's going to be it. (laughs) Um, Plot Twist is a coffee pilsner. I have had this, and I will tell you this. If you like coffee beans straight up or dark coffee you're going to like this beer a lot. So just really? cause it's a, just because it's a Pilsner, do not be fooled. This is the most direct coffee flavor I've had in a beer. It is like hmm, it is like drinking a coffee bean. It is it is good. It's good, but it's sharp stuff. Um, oh, there's the Fieldberry Post. Sorry about that. Low Brew. Um, partnering Lake of the Woods. With Lake of the Woods, thank you. Um, partnering with a graffiti art for a launch of a Sasquatch black lager. I don't know what the percentage is. I'd assume a 3,000 just from the look of the can. <laughs> um, Rendezvous Brew. This might be the longest beer news. Lot I'm like on. chugging through this as best I can. Um, we just released, or they just released a delicious milk stout. So smooth, roasty, some sweet and approachable. It seems like it's just a really like normal milk stout. Um, and the last thing in here, and this was a late addition, Kilter is partnering with Counterpart Brewing in Niagara Falls. I'm really excited as someone who's been to Counterpart in Niagara Falls. So it's kind of, it was kind of surprising to see them on the can. But they're going to be review, uh, releasing this simultaneously between Ontario and Winnipeg, which is cool to see Kilter continue to expand throughout the country. Uh, finally, the last picture in the beer news is a picture of Earthquake in a singlet. Impossible <laughs> not to look at the groin area of a picture of Earthquake. Um, I hate you, Matt. I hate you so much. You're so it was, welcome. It was, well, an at least offensive, it was an offensive post. Um, I almost threw up halfway through the beer news. Uh, and that is the end of it. So a long beer news this week. Lots going on. Make sure you go out and pick up as many of these that interest you or pick them all up and make sure to review them on Untapped. Pat, back to you. Oh, thank you, Jordan. Uh, All right, so we'll take a little break, and when we come back, we will get to the wet breads and rocket ships. Oh, Michael, this is going to be fun to watch. And we're so back. Guys, we're so back. Perpetually back. So back. Hey, guys, I found a flaw in the black wheat lager. What's that? Um, This can was accidentally wrapped with two um, two, uh, uh, labels, and the second label was above the can. And I didn't notice it before I drank it, so I literally just licked a label. Um, oh. So I might die now, oh, and that's, cool. that's terrifying. So oh. that's that's my that's my um my my dark side of the pod this week <laughs> is potentially getting COVID from a label because I licked it by accident. All right, so uh, you're, let's you're, get... I'm sure you'll be fine. I'm sure you'll be fine. <laughs> let's you know get what? That's the type of positivity. I, you know what? That's the positivity from a one and Jays fan. That's what I see right oh, there. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. One and oh. Pat, you wouldn't get it. You wouldn't get it. That's true. I, I am not one and oh. All right, so we'll get some wet breads and rocket ships of this week in wrestling. Uh, kind of an interesting week. A lot of a uh, lot of minor things I think were really good, and some some misses, but not like huge. I think we're on the road to WrestleMania, and I think just March in general is going to be a month to watch in wrestling because it, you're building to that big big two night event, which is WrestleMania. Um, so you know what? I'm going to start things off. I'm going to go with a rocket ship. Um, Pat deciding. Okay. Pat deciding. Yeah. All right, that's decided. Take charge. Take charge. Go I'm sure right. this is going to be good. Let's go. I, I, I I'm going to go to SmackDown, and what you're going to do WWE? Yeah. Oh yeah. boy. I, I, what I, happened? Apollo Cruz. Yes. For me, Patrick. I, Apollo Cruz has always been a great worker. He's amazing in the ring. Always has great matches. Uh, but they're just missing. He was missing character all the time. And uh, I think we s- we're starting to see it. They paired him up with Big E in a feud. Uh, he's kind of took the heel the heel way. I, he's never been a heel in WWE, Apollo Crews. And I think that's when you tap into someone's personality, really, as a wrestler, is when they are a heel. I mean, Kevin Owens, always a better heel than he is a face. Oh, yeah. But now he's good at both because you kind of don't have any limits when you're a heel. And uh, Apollo Crews is kind of going with this Nigerian heritage thing and he's saying he is a true what is it how does he word it matt i don't know 
He tr- I think he said, I'm a true African-American wrestler. I think they're going that route with it. I, 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 I watched uh, full disclosure, I, I watch SmackDown on five volume every Friday while we Zoom with the buddies. Yeah, Matt, and Matt got, Matt got distracted there because I accidentally tipped my beer over slightly, but not on my computer, so I'm trying yeah. to move it out the way. So that's You why are Matt, the most spilly guy yeah, like, I Jesus, know. Figure it's because it I'm trying to get stuff ready for later in the podcast. Just, just... Keep so uh yeah so that's my rocket ship is apollo cruz with this nigerian kind of heritage gimmick that he's going with he's so like he seems so badass and he's gonna you pair him up with biggie and good things are gonna happen because they're so good together they have such chemistry in the ring i think this is gonna elevate the intercontinental title it's gonna elevate Big E. it's gonna elevate apollo cruz as a mid-card heel and i just i just loved all of it so i totally uh, agree apollo with cruz. that i saw him come out and he did that and i thought it was I thought it was fantastic. I didn't listen to his promo, but I just thought the presentation was really good. Yeah. So, um, Matt, I'll go to you. What was your rocket ship of the week? All right. So, there was a lot of stuff that was pretty good in wrestling this week, I thought. Um, something that stood out to me, and because you went to SmackDown, I'll go to AEW instead of going to SmackDown again. Mm-hmm. Uh, Archer versus Phoenix. Oh yeah, in the main event. Yeah, that was that was something. Okay, so early in the early in the show, they had a little a little interaction, and I was like, I'm kind of intrigued, but uh, I mean, it was a shitty our... promo. We can just say that, right? Yeah, it wasn't, wasn't the best. Yeah, but th- I think that was mostly the translator's fault. Like the best thing he could come up with, Phoenix said, was like, "You're the worst partner I've ever had." Yeah, like, and give, that's give the, the thing, guy right? A like, fucking help. Yeah, he, him not him not speaking English kind of take, took away from the promo, but I was still like how is this match going to go? Because Archer is this monster and Phoenix is this fast paced, high flyer kind of deal. Yeah. But and I think Arch- they- Archer's worked in Japan, right? So he's you, used to that you style. took the words yeah. right out of my mouth. Yeah. yeah. And you know what? Sometimes I forget that because I see Archer and Archer screams to me, monster WWE heel. Yeah. But he's, he's, he's got la- more layers than that. And I think that's what makes him so good. And their match was, fantastic i really really enjoyed their match yeah. um i think the right guy won i think archer uh has to win that, win that. Has to win. I, i'll just i'll just say i don't think phoenix is the guy like he loses i feel like phoenix loses a lot and he never gets hurt by a loss because no, yeah he but like he's because silly he's such a good worker oh yeah. my god yeah yeah that so was a good the- match that was good that was on the list for uh rocket ships for me so is that it matt yep. that's how you're gonna end it Wow, that sounded wow. judgy. How should I end it? That sounded should I judgy. End it in a different way. Matt, oh, I, I, I thought, it Matt, wrap I liked it up. It. Wrap it up nicely for us. Put a little bow on it. I thought I did, and then you guys kept talking. So, oh, I'm uh, sorry. Okay, so Matt's rocket ship <laughs> is the Phoenix and Lance Archer match. I hate Very you nice guys rec- so much. Sometimes it's unbelievable. Oh, I'm sorry, 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 guys. Hey, I, I, you that's hate just me. A reflex. It's you hate a reflex. me. Sorry for the ricochet shot. Me. Sorry for the ricochet shot, Jordan. Sorry. Yeah. I apologize. Okay, All right, so, so Jordan, you're, I will you're say this ship. with the demand that I get to go first for wet breads. Is that fair? That's fair. That's fair. Okay, this is going to be a short rocket ship. Um, Zaylee stomping the leg of Cat uh, or uh, Casey. Thank you. I always go to Cat Zingano like it's she's an yeah. MMA. <laughs> um, that I saw that and thought it was a um, and thought it was a um, a botch. Um, mm. I saw it like I I saw it and I was like oh because they cut the camera away. And I'm like, sweet baby Jesus, she just, like, absolutely dusted this lady's leg. And then I forgot who she is, who is fucking Gumby. Um, And that woman made that thing look nasty. So that was my spot of the week, because I even, like, you guys posted it again in the group. And I saw it, and I was like, oh, that still looks gnarly. That, like, that still looks like... Should... They fucked Is Xyling... Is she setting up for... She's setting up for something big, I think. I not hope big. so. I still I, am holding out hope that um, the person in the chair is like an actual wrestler and not just someone who sits in the chair. Um, but no, I mean, we'll we'll see where they take it. Like, it's cool to see them trying something a little new and a little darker with the... Because um, I think they took a step in that direction with Io Shirai's character, but it wasn't like the whole step. And I think no, this yeah, is like the full step. All right, so uh, Wet Bread. Go for it. This is, even for wrestling, the worst acting... I have seen in my entire life. The Young Bucks dad oh, <laughs> good <God>. was <laughs> is D D oh. level porn acting bad. Okay. D level porn. That is D-level fantastic. Porn that is fantastic. 
because I watched it and and it was one of those angles that could have been incredible. Like it could, no. and even for the young bucks, it's like like they no, had the blood. I, I see what he's saying there. They had the blood. They're like smacking him around. Like you know what I'm saying. Like you could have really like hammed it up and like bloodied up the young bucks dad. But he looks like he looks like um. He were, him. He was like, if a really, 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 really poor man, Steven Seagal, was actually allowed to bleed in an action movie. Oh That's what that reminded me of. So I thought it was bad acting, and it was like, he couldn't even act like, like his thought was like, hey man, act like we beat you up. And he acted like um, he died in the 1970s action movie. It was horrible. Okay, I'll just pile on that very quickly. The whole story made no sense. So you're telling me, the Young Bucks, who are executive producers of AEW, a, pro a program and a company that have been going on for just over a year, this is the first time their parents have seen their faces on the side of a truck? No, the back of the truck. So they saw the side oh. of the truck. Oh, sorry. They hadn't seen the back of the truck yet because the truck's yeah. open. And like, it was stupid. It was, it. If this was the first week, the storyline would have made sense. But it's a year yeah. in. Your parents have been to a live show. So it, Not with COVID. I, I just want to say... Oh, yeah, no, you're right. It's hard for me. I was trying to play devil's advocate. What they, I what I feel like... And I don't think they blatantly tried to rip this off. I think it's just, like, something I can compare it to. The last time something like this happened, Batista was dragging Ric Flair, Ric Flair. by the back... And that's that was kind of this... That whole build and that whole storyline. But that was really well done. Like, I felt that. Yeah. yeah. To my core. Mm -hmm. This one, I was like... I was trying not to laugh. Matt, do you think really, if you really felt it more because it was Ric Flair and not just like some guy like that Triple H's know? fucking dad? Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Yeah, so it's like it, I don't know. Like I feel like the dad has to matter. Like I feel like you could have done that with like Bob Orton when Randy was there. Like think of any wrestling dad, right? Yeah. But just like hi, this is like generic dad. Like this is generic <laughs> ponytail dad number one. Yeah. You know what I it mean? Like, and by the way, the Young Bucks dad looks exactly how I thought the Young Bucks yeah, dad was. That looking. is 100%. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, I saw his their dad, and I'm like, oh, yeah, you two are chips off the. And you so, obviously, you act like as good as he does. So, did the Young Bucks grow their hair out first and look like that? Or did the dad grow his hair oh, out? I don't you think it matters. I think they're fair, all terrible. No, but that's such they're a fair question. Like, did the right. Young Bucks make it? And the dad was like, oh, my, I want to be a part of this. Or and like were the Young Bucks like, our dad looks like a joke. We should look like a joke. <laughs> I feel like like if, if you're that guy, though, like you've just been a ponytail guy for your whole life, right? Oh, like, yeah. You yeah. just oh, yeah. are a ponytail yeah. guy. And you don't grow into a ponytail look. No. He, no, you don't. Uh, he's been, And he probably had like a, a really entry-level motorcycle. Um, like I could, did you remember like could, Harley had like a Toyota? Or yeah, something. I can, I can, I can build the Young Buck sad life in my head and probably speak to it. Word for word. Oh, all right, Matt, you're you're my friend of the week. My what bread of the week? I'm going to AEW too. Paul White joining AEW and becoming elite. Uh, like uh, you've given 22 years of your life to WWE. They've given you every opportunity. They've done everything they could with you and because you're not ready to retire and you got offended which came out this week because you got offended because randy orton called you washed up or something on legends night you left and you're going to be a commentator slash possibly in ring like you're done buddy you're done. commentator Just on their on. on their c level show they don't even have a b level show yet yeah they do it's dark on youtube isn't this going to be above dark no i think it's not going to be what you know yeah, what i actually oh i disagree with this i mean if the guy doesn't want to go he doesn't have to go um you know uh, until you, you know what said... had, had he signed had he signed and just been a commentator i would think i would have been able to leave it alone but the fact that he wants to actively wrestle um no okay so let's leave aside his in-ring perceived performance right what's the yeah. major difference between him and what jericho did Jericho was still elite level talent, but that's but here's what I'm saying It's like you're Jericho telling me that drive a the narrative. Big Show can't in some way, shape, or form. No, I I disagree. I think he can put together a pretty good storyline. I think that guy's done a great job weaving in and out of heel and face over mm -hmm. the years. I I don't think he can put together this type of storyline and the type of performance that AEW needs. I'm Chris more Jericho, interested in seeing him than it. Sting. Chris Jericho could carry. Ooh, a company. I don't know about that. Sting, Sting did the Scorpion Death Drop and the Stinger Splash on AEW. That's like throwing a pebble at an ocean. All right? Those moves are, there's aged, and then there's that. Yeah, but I don't know. 
I, it's, like you it's, give me the 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 punch and the choke slam. That's more. That's better than mm. those two moves. It's not as iconic. Not as iconic. No, I was just gonna say you're comparing Sting's iconicness it's a to Slash and a reverse DDT. It's still Sting is still Doesn't Sting. Matter. And Big Show is not the same. First of all, I remember him as the Giant, and I will not have you calling him the Big. Oh, the Giant. <laughs> all right, I'll finish things out and very yet-tay. quickly on the. Uh, on the same wholly of bad acting. Matt, I uh, disagree with you. I hold it. Okay. And I'm excited to see where it goes. If he You're does, allowed to. I, oh, thank God. I was worried you were going to tell me. I was anyway, so uh, <laughs> the same vein of bad acting with the Young Bucks dad. I feel like Randy Orton and the Fiend's storyline has been w- really well done. Weaving in Alexa Bliss has been really well done as well. But this week with the Papa Shango shit coming out of his mouth. It was. Didn't it Alexa was, do that a couple weeks ago? The black yeah, stuff. Yeah, it, it's so hokey. It just it does it does it doesn't need that kind of shit. It doesn't need to be that. It's shock factor when it doesn't shock anyone. Yeah, I feel like I feel like the fiend is more psychological, and we saw that with Cena at WrestleMania last year. Mm-hmm. I don't think you need to go the route of like magical entity. I, we're going to another cinematic, right, at WrestleMania? I would Hopefully. love that, oh, but I, I don't, oh, don't want to... No. Randy Orton could be, and I didn't even think of this till right now, that could be, if they go woke with it like they did with John, yeah. Randy could be, if Randy's ready to go the full distance and to talk about his career and, like, the shit, and, like, you talk about, like, his fan interactions, how he's been tough to work with over the years, I think yeah. you can go a pretty long way with Randy Orton. And the if, that, if this is what The Fiend is, is what he builds to a big WrestleMania cinematic match every year, Sign me up every year for it. I think yeah. that. Right. Can you imagine um, a story where the fiend comes to the conclusion that Randy Orton was the legend killer because he's afraid he can't stack up to the legends when his career is over? I think that's where they're going. Oh, wow. Amazing. Just fucking sign me mind. up. Sign What's me up, up, WWE. Let's just book. We'll all book the show. Let's just do it. Can you imagine, like, right at the end, he just ki- like, kills the Bliss whole match him, is though? him killing legend after legend. I think and Alexa Bliss is going to be involved. I think it'll be great. His whole match is him killing legend after legend and the fiend talking about it. And then at the end, he stands alone. There's like no one standing beside him, but it's not in a happy way. Yeah. And it's I like, think... you've never been able to stack up to the ledge. Oh, oh, oh. Now I hope it happens. I'm getting, I'm getting gooseies. I'm getting goosies. Gracious. Yeah. So uh, we'll end but with But this week and... sucked. This week sucked. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. I'm just hoping they can pull it back on track. Yeah. I think that they will be able to. And I look forward to it. I hope they do a good cinematic match at WrestleMania. All right, so we'll leave it there. And when we come back, we'll do our second ever light side of the ring with a special little visual. Oh, gimmick. yeah. The fucking upgrades, baby. The dangerous day I live is real dangerous. All right, we're super back. Very excited. All right, we're super back. Very excited. So we had la- the last light side of the ring that we did. Uh, we did tough guys in wrestling to kind of prove that wrestling isn't fake. The bad F word in wrestling. Um, Jordan, uh, myself and Matt talked about it after and Jordan brought up the point, you know what? This would be super cool with visuals. So Jordan, I created some visuals for yes! us. Yes. So I this, let's go. Let's go. We, will, we will have this on the podcast and, but then I, we will also be releasing this portion of the podcast as a YouTube video. Um, oh shit. So you, okay. So you'll be able to see what I am showing the guys. Sometimes you might hear them giggle a little bit and you're like, why are they laughing? You didn't really say anything funny. Well, most of what I say is funny, but because it'll be a YouTube, yeah. uh, or because it is a PowerPoint, there will be things that they see. It's a it's fucking a PowerPoint? PowerPoint? It is a PowerPoint. I can't. Okay, now I'm excited. Okay. I'm expecting so, some great shit here now. Now, um, I, I fucking actually, love PowerPoint. I actually I sent why. you guys uh, the, the, the opening of what I was going to use for YouTube uh, for this segment. Very big, very, very big, good reaction from you guys. So uh, before we go into that, for this podcast sake uh this week on the light side of the ring our second episode of light side of the ring i went with tales from the road and the sky okay so uh, we're going to talk about uh i have a good wrestling, feeling about this is now. travelings when they're on the road when they take the plane and we'll end with one of the most notorious plane rides in wrestling folklore oh history. baby fantastic so now i gotta figure out i'm gonna share the screen uh, my whole screen. I didn't account for this part in the recording. Yeah. Do you, oh, that was you know, pretty fast. Jordan, do you know why you love PowerPoint? Why is that? Because, like, a fifth grader can make a PowerPoint. And, and, and I'm hoping it's the level of, like, a second grader. Like, my right. true hope so, oh, is that... Is going off the rails uh, already. Oh, Pat, Pat started at the very end. We're going to have okay, to do some so, quality editing here. Here we are. 
the light side of the ring, <laughs> tales from the road, and the sky. So it's important to understand. Here. <laughs> <laughs> See, there it is, the first giggle. Oh, that's uh, for sure somewhere in fucking Idaho. Like, just yeah. the middle of Idaho. So um, in the past, uh, it was very well known that most wrestlers would be on the road 350 days a year. Uh, it would be a long haul. They would perform on the weekends and sometimes do double shots on Sundays. So they wrestle in the afternoon and then the evening in another city and they have to get there to do so. Um, they rarely saw their families. Uh, they never really had a normal life. And the prime example of that is Ric Flair. He'll come back later. Ric Flair just can't turn it off. Ric Flair is him now. There is no... Fleer is, I believe, is, is his real last name. Rick, Rick Fleer. Richard Rick, Fleer. Richard Fleer. They're, that guy is dead, and Rick Flair is who he is through and through now. And he attributes that to being on the road all the time and having to be Rick Flair all the time. Stuck in um, tape, babe. So they would eat, I mean, sometimes when they could afford it. They would sleep sometimes when the coast is clear. That'll be obvious later. Um, they would be in hotel rooms with three to four people to kind of cut costs. And these are wrestlers, so we're talking men who are six feet and above, usually uh, close to 300 pounds. So four people in a hotel room, not much room to operate in. Um, and when boredom, boredom would set in, that they would circumvent, big word, look it up, uh, that with booze. <laughs> but and but with, you pronounced boredom wrong. So. Did I? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Boredom, um, they would circumvent that with booze and drugs. Um, so... Not a great recipe for success uh, in the long haul of things. So they were uh, preparing years ago for a pandemic. Yeah. So uh, some stories were tame. Others are funny. And, well, others are kind of borderline scary. Uh, so we'll start with this kind of um, – this part of uh, an interview given by Kevin Nash. Uh, Kevin Nash stated that in an interview – Oh, that's one of the most dude. overrated wrestlers of all time right there. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> that guy you know screams uh, overrated. No, that's Kevin Nash. That's not Diesel. That's oh, not right. Diesel. You're right. Yeah, excuse me. Yeah. Sorry. Dude. That's not uh, Scott Nash. Scott Nash. <laughs> Scott, no, that's it's Kevin, Kevin Hall. That's Kevin, Kevin Hall. Hall. Kevin that's fucking Kevin, Kevin Hall, right? <laughs> so uh, what happened was Kevin Nash explained that touring with the world with wrestlers requires you to follow simply one rule. There is really only one rule when it comes to traveling with wrestlers, and that is never fall asleep. Never, ever fall asleep. <laughs> um, the reason for that is uh, whether you're traveling by bus uh, or you're traveling by plane, uh, it is very important <laughs> no matter how tired you are or how we're gonna owe get We're going to owe Getty Images like $1,000 by the end of this. <laughs> so it was to never fall asleep. You're going to see you wear bus. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so european tours were probably the worst um, and why does pat have like pat picked a plane where one engine's on fire it looks like <laughs> yeah, it might have been the plane that had the, the problem with it oh that's awesome i never noticed that. It, it can still fly pick, though that's like here we have all these pictures of normal airplanes but let's pick the one with the I'm right move us on here. Fire. um now so next so there's punishments for those people that would fall asleep um this punishments uh involve some things were tame um a shaving cream hat for those of oh, you who are sounds, watching this on YouTube. Stylish. This is shaving cream. They would fill your whole head with shaving cream. Um, did you just explain what shaving cream is? Yes, I did. Yes. Okay. Good, uh, good job, Pat. Thank you. They would actually super glue your sunglasses to your face. That's if they could. fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and then one of the more tame ones, but not really tame, kind of more offensive. Uh, they give you the old Sharpie mustache. Uh, um, now, the issue with the Sharpie mustache. Of, easy to get rid of. The issue with the Sharpie mustache, if it was based off a character in a historical character that oh. not many people want to be associated with. You can fill in the blanks. There. Oh, mm. I thought yeah. you were going to say it was like they drew so much of their face that it was kind of like a, a blackface offensive thing. But no, I, no. I, I see they went a different yeah. offensive mm. direction yes. with this. Um, uh, and the final one, which uh, there is a, some a fam famous instances of this, uh, they would actually shave off your eyebrows. Um, so uh, <laughs> as you see here... Uh, the one, two, three kid, Sean Waltman, was actually a uh, victim of this. He did fall Making asleep him work plane ride. after that is, I guess, how long would you have to be off? Like a month to grow no, your the eyebrows most, uh, back? Actually, the most important part of this, he actually uh, got his eyebrows shaved off. And then the next day had to do promo shots. Which that's is fantastic. No that's so yeah. incredible. I mean, that's basically, I, I just assume Sean Waltman would say, I have no eyebrows. So, yeah. That's kind of what I was going with. That's, um, that looks like you photoshopped his eyebrows off, but you can assure me <laughs> no, that's a real picture. Um, now, the most notorious 
when it comes to being bored. That is a hell of a mullet, by the way. That's fucking uh, something right there. Taking some drugs. Uh, Sean Waltman tells a famous story. Kevin Nash repeats it. Um, You try random drugs. Let's just say that uh, when you're on the European tour. Uh, So X-Pac walked into a dressing room after a European show, threw a Ziploc bag of drugs onto a table and uh, exclaimed, these are, let me get this right, uh, phenobarbitars. That's type of drug. I looked into it. Yeah. If you say so, bud. um, I looked into it and actually this is used to help people with seizures and epilepsy. Um, And then X-Pac followed up by saying, I don't know what they are, but let's make sure we take four to five of them at once. (laughs) Oh, Oh, boy. Um, Yeah. So uh, the best part (laughs) to come back boredom as well, when it wasn't drugs, they had wrestlers had this weird thing of they were bored. They would go to tanning beds. So if you go back and watch on the WWE Network, I looked it up a little bit. You will notice when they're coming fresh off a European tour, guys are extremely tan, like to the point where they're orange. And I was talking about the beaches in Europe. No, they go tanning bed. They don't do beaches. They don't have time. So they go to tanning beds. Apparently tanning beds in Europe are extremely cheap or easy to access. I don't know. But tanning beds. So everybody came back super tan. Take now, if we, can get, if we can get into some stories now. Um, the first one, it could be very tame. Trish Stratus, uh, one of the all-time great women's wrestlers, uh, tells a story of how she was at an airport. She kind of did some autographs with some fans, and then she was kind of bombarded with more autographs. And it was to the point where she was kind of like, wow, this is kind of crazy. I didn't realize I was this famous. Some uh, airport security came up to her and said, hey, why don't we take you to somewhere else so you can have some peace and quiet? And she was like, that's super weird. That's never happened to me before. Um, So she was super impressed with that. And then she was actually upgraded to first class and escorted onto the plane before anybody else so that she could really get comfortable. Uh, Trish Stratish being a, a nice hometown Canadian girl. Uh, didn't think much of it, and she was From actually Toronto, the most. Jordan. Yeah, I, she might be the most humble person Toronto's ever produced. I'll tell you that. <laughs> she was. She was actually the most impressed that when she asked for a diet coke, she received it in about a minute. As first of all, asking for soda on an airplane is a. Oh, I guess first class. I was thinking like coach, and it's like I feel like they would just look at you and be like, "Just shut up. We're gonna come by with the cart, you pleb." Now, um, so she got off the plane. Was, was actually, <laughs> she was actually escorted off the plane with security again. So she was just living the high life. And then as the security let her go, they go, I hope you had a nice flight. Enjoy your day, Mrs. Spears. Um, <laughs> that, that, <laughs> that, that's not Britney Spears. That's not Britney Spears? Yeah, that's she has Christina hair. Aguilera. She has hair and she's not controlled oh, by her father. Oh, that is Christina Aguilera. That's my bad. Oh, oh, no. oh, oh. Pat. Um, Even Pat, if you did that on purpose, that's still amazing. <laughs> Pat, if you, I understand that you – was this kind of like a genie in a bottle situation? I mean, it could be. Did so it rub, it was, did it rub it you dirty. the right – did it rub you the right way? It was dirty, I'll tell you that. Oh, <laughs> oh there you went. You know what, Pat? You are beautiful, beautiful in guys. every it's single beautiful. way. Oh, oh Matt. In every single kind of oh, way. Oh, Matt, you beat me to it. All right, yeah. so now let's, let's... I thought we were all doing one, so... So let's continue <laughs> no, to... We're going to continue to elevate the tales from the road before we get to our last story. Um, yeah. The next one is a Canadian story, actually. Ooh. Um, this is pretty well known. Um, it was with... Uh... That is quite the stock map of Canada. <laughs> yes, and it happened in the northern part of Canada. Um, <laughs> thank, you so... for po- thank you for pointing that out. Absolutely. Um, this is actually a story that is told multiple times by Christian Edge and Rhino. But for this sake of this story, at this point, it was Sexton Hardcastle, which is what Edge L- went by. Way better name than Edge. Amazing yeah, name. Super good. Amazing. Um, and Rhino. So what ha- what the story goes oh, I is... was I was really hoping he had like a, <laughs> a picture like, of a rhino. <laughs> yeah, like another name that wasn't Rhino. I did find the worst oh, picture so of Rhino hungry. you could find, clearly. Um, so they did all these northern tours, and they called them, I believe they called them like the Death the deathly northern tours Nor- because northern death tours that's it what it is um so they would travel on not roads because at this time ice there roads, were no baby. roads they would do ice they were like ice road truckers pretty oh, much oh man and they were a very small group of wrestlers and they all traveled together in a, a large van or a couple vans because they had all the gear all the ring equipment and every piece of talent 
That's so uh, they would up. they would travel to northern reserves and do small shows. And this is kind of how Canadian wrestlers, you know, cut their teeth in the business. So the story goes, they're driving. Rhino is fall, is asleep on top of ring of the ring itself in the back of the van. And he's awakened by people who are in panic because he looks out and the van is sinking <laughs> because they have broken through the ice. They've reached this like kind oh, of weird gosh. valley where the ice is not stable. And they've went, they've gotten about halfway through it. And then they started going under the water. So it's like three in the morning and there's nobody there that's going to come save you. So Rhino jumps out of the van and the story goes, everybody has said this is true. He basically pulls the van out himself. I believe that. I believe that guy was, I like, that see, guy I, was yeah. in his heyday. That dude was I don't want to believe. I don't want to believe that is a fridge. I don't want to believe that. That is a fridge. Rhino's is Rhino Canadian? No. no. So was he just up on the tour because he's Rhino? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think he was he's buddies with Edge and Christian, so I think that's, that's awesome. how it worked out. So yeah, that's sure. there's there's a danger aspect to it. If you really love wrestling, you're gonna have to go through these northern tours, it seems if you're Canadian okay, at some so, point. So I'm like slowly realizing now that the furthermost northern tip of Quebec is basically Nunavut. Mm -hmm. I Whoa. didn't realize that Quebec and Newfoundland went up that high. Yeah. yeah. Holy shit. And so Ontario, welcome to geography. Like, like where I grew up is essentially New York. Um, so now, yeah, those you're are essentially an American. Those are kind of two of the tamer That's stories. Fair. Now, That's fair. guys, how about we get into some really messed up shit? Yep. Are you going on the plane? Please tell me you're not, going on the plane. Not yet. Not going okay. on the plane. We got yeah, to call People aren't here for the, the, the soft stuff, even though Sexton Hardcastle, um, I don't yeah. think it's ever he been soft. He clearly was not the life. soft stuff. He went in the ring six inches hard. Now I'm going to put two <laughs> men up on the screen here and my beautiful PowerPoint. And you will know exactly what story I am talking uh, about. Um, this is uh, in 1987. The Iron Sheik the and, and uh, Jim, the hacksaw, Jim Duggan. Uh, he, at this time, kayfabe is very ingrained in the wrestling world. Pat, what kayfabe is kayfabe? They, oh, sorry. Thank you. Kayfabe Excuse meaning me. that they treat wrestling storylines as if they're real, as if they're fact. Uh, so good guys are good guys. Bad guys are bad guys. Never do the two co-mingle. Um, so at this time, Hacksaw is one of the top baby faces, and the Iron Sheik is one of the top heels. Just for a visual guys, representation, guys. one is good, one ah, is bad. No way! That's what it was in the 80s? I could have yes. been told by their stereotypes. Um, so the problem with this whole thing <laughs> is that at this point, um, Hacksaw and Sheik are friends. And they decide, screw KFIP, let's travel together. So they get in the same car. Normally wouldn't be a big issue, but wrestlers are not the greatest drivers. They don't make the the best decisions at this time. Especially when you're smoking weed while driving. Well, allegedly, they're they're they're, they're playing with a herb. <laughs> um, and there was also medicinal. It was medicinal. Yes, uh, and uh, also there is rumors that there it was snowing at the time. <laughs> um, so they had this going on, and they were driving a little reckless, and they were pulled over. Obviously, uh, usually the biggest story would be. Wrestlers have drugs in their car. Uh, but actually, f the f biggest part of the story, headline news, was that a good guy wrestler and a bad guy wrestler were in the same Not car just together. a good guy and a bad guy. The, the all-American hero. One of the all-American heroes and the bad guy yeah. from Saudi yeah. Arabia or whatever. Iran. 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 Wait, so, yeah. <laughs> not the drugs, but I'm the fact they that took a, a car good guy wrestler. i where he's from. Yeah. So a good guy wrestler, wow, <laughs> bad guy wrestler, up against each other in a match, but then they get in the same car and they smoke a doobie and have some fun with some snow. Allegedly, allegedly, um, yeah. So that's and then another one that's fun that comes to mind before we get to the main event of our evening. Wait, Pat, um, hold on. What happened after the the they got pulled over? Oh yeah, they got pulled over and were both arrested and uh, the sheik was fired very quickly. Uh, okay. And Hacksaw was also fired, which he says, he claims to this day, that this really crushed his push in the company. And he never really recovered from that. I'm sure and that's what so. it was. I'm sure that's what yeah. it was. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's just killing it with all his charisma and all his in-ring talent. Um, <laughs> overrated as hell. Uh, but yeah, so that kind of killed both their careers in the WWE. They both kind of returned at one point, but it never really was the same. Hacksaw never held a title. Sheik was never the Sheik again. Sheik had his own problems. You could watch a documentary on Prime. It's pretty, pretty wild shit. He looks like he was in a Kurt Angle next situation. So once again, I'm going to move us so that you can see. Um, so at this point, we're going to get to the Steiner brothers who are certified yes. insane. 
um, who traveled a lot with Sting. Uh, this is Surfer Sting at the time in WCW. Um, there was an incident with our man Paul Heyman, as you could kind of see on the screen in my amazing PowerPoint. Uh, so Heyman traveled with Fatu and Samu. Ooh, this is going to be bad. Uh, so, <laughs> oh, wow, that's awesome. Okay, I could do that. Uh, so they traveled together. And the Steiner Brothers' biggest fun thing they used to do while driving on the road was they played this super fun game. They would drive up really fast next to a car of people that they knew. Rick would climb out of the window full speed in motion and open the door of the other car to scare them. I mean, they're not wrong. Like that's you terrifying. That you can't make that up. I have never heard this that's story. That's very scary. And this so, is Paul Heyman being the absolute genius that he is told Fatu and Samu who he was driving around in his rental car. He said, just lock the door. They can't get in. Duh. Genius move. Yeah. Genius. Like, big brain move. That's why I mean, Heyman was the leader of the bunch, you know? It's that type of elite thinking. So, the Steiners pull up next to him with Sting, who is the driver, and Rick gets out of the window and pulls on the door. It's locked, can't get in. Um, so, instead of just giving up, the Steiners do something else hilarious. They start taking stuff out of their car and pelleting Heyman's car full speed while he's driving. When I say pelleting with things... I don't know what they do, threw. Do you but mean they... pelting? Pelting that one. Yes, that is yeah, because uh, they're not throwing um, a peloton. Trendy, yeah, they're not throwing trendy bicycle. Sorry, I'm sorry. Words, words are tough. I words believe tough. pelting. Is... Oh no, they were. You know what he was? He was. He was furring them. He was literally creating fur coats at them. Oh, there you go. Pelting. Oh, he's throwing. Yeah. He's throwing pelts. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> they started throwing stuff, and I don't know what they threw. I couldn't find that in my research. They destroyed Heyman's car. To the point where it was written what off. What was he throwing? Rocks? I'm not sure. So to this day, actually, Paul Heyman cannot rent a car in North Carolina. <laughs> to this day. He cannot rent a car in North Carolina. Um, Wait, all thanks to the Steiner Brothers uh, hilarious never mind. joke. Never mind. Hilarious joke. Um, so uh, we get to now the main event of the light side uh, of the Low hanging fruit there, buddy. <laughs> What's the problem? What's the problem? <laughs> Nothing. Keep going. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> All right. So, it is given the name, very famous name, it is the plane ride from hell. H-E <laughs> double hockey sticks, baby! <laughs> this is... I'm just one glad of, that plane's not on fire. I would this say moment. this is the most notorious road story in the history of wrestling. This could have been the whole episode. It could have. Um, yeah. But I'll get, I'll kind of breeze through it a little bit. So what happened was they were, they had just finished a pay-per-view, the uh, insurrection pay-per-view in Britain. And they, what happened in the past was Vince McMahon would rent out, purchase uh, a bunch of planes, 747s, to get all of the talent, all of the crew from Europe to the States and back again. Um, so they could do raw the next day. So they could do raw the next night now, and get everybody back. Pat, just out of curiosity, I don't know if you know this. A seven forty seven holds like hundreds of people. So what, are we talking multiple or just one? It should just I, be one, right? So what I'm reading, it's been it was two. I believe that's it was two. unbelievable yeah. the amount of people. Unless you're thinking people are going to spread out, but like that's a fuckload of space. So the best part of all of this was not only was the flight free, but uh, full bar. An open bar. Yes. Um, which Sounds like sign me up. That's my future wedding. When you have a 747 <laughs> full of substance abusers who are off fresh off a very long European tour with very little breaks, recipe for success right there. Yeah. Um, so the main players on this... Nothing could go wrong. Nothing could go wrong. So the main players in this story are Kurt, Mr. Perfect Henning, Brock Lesnar, Ric Flair, Gold Dust... Scott Hall, Michael P.S. Hayes, and X-Pac, Sean Waldman. So I'm going to break this down in a, to a couple of stories. Um, it starts off very innocently. Scott Hall and Mr. Perfect start tagging people with shaving cream. I guess wrestlers really think shaving cream is hilarious. Um, so it's innocent and enough, and then it kind of escalates real quick. I would imagine that in the wrestling community, shaving cream is everywhere simply because they have to, like, shave all the time. Yeah, you can't just, like, have five o'clock shadow. Yeah, so I can I can imagine like they each have their own like massive can of shaving cream they take with them everywhere. 
All right. So the first incident, I nicknamed it the Minnesota Tussle. Um, so this is between... I can't wait for this. Uh, two, <laughs> two men from Minnesota. Uh, if for those of you who don't know what Minnesota is, it is a, it is a state. The state of Minnesota, which is like a province, if you're comparing it to the to the Canada, and this is between Brock Lesnar and Mr. Perfect Kurt Hennig, both Minnesota natives, um, and both riding amateur... buddies. They rode together, right? Yeah, they were buddies, and they were both am- They have both have amateur wrestling backgrounds. Um, Brock was a little more decorated than Mr. Perfect. Uh, so what happened was you're 25,000 feet in the air. What are you going to do? You're going to egg on your buddy to the point where you get into a takedown contest on a plane a 747 uh, that sounds um, something like something that so, everybody decided, do. so kurt told brock you can't take me down there's no way you could take me down i could block every takedown you give me so it starts off innocently enough and they start kind of getting aggressive and then brock gets pissed because he can't take down kurt henning um so they start pushing and shoving and they really get aggressive and then bump into the emergency exit door oh man twenty five thousand feet in the air I would um, shit myself. Now I looked into it. It's very, very hard to bust open that door. It's yeah, it's, it's has, it has four locks on it. Yeah, you can't just pull a lever and it opens. Um, but it you mean movies have lied to me my entire yes, life? Absolutely, they have. Um, so <laughs> they only had two nervous. parachutes, Matt, mm-hmm. and everybody on the plane had to fight to the mm-hmm. death to figure out who gets the two parachutes. But one of the parachutes has been booby trapped from the beginning by Vince McMahon. And anyways, that's the uh, that's the Marine Nine. Uh, <laughs> oh, <fuck. laughs> so everyone starts to get a little nervous because Brock's a big dude, and they think he can open that door and kill everybody. Um, so it takes about five men to separate them. They get separated. Everything's okay, but it was a big kerfuffle, and not everybody was okay with it. And Vince, kerfuffle, let, good word. let me remind you, Vince McMahon is on the plane. Okay. Oh, I didn't. So he, okay, so he's yeah, oh, but he's probably he's probably on the upper deck. Yeah, he's he's not <laughs> there, but he knows what's going on. Yeah. Um, the next incident, uh, two incidents, involve Ric Flair and Goldust. Both uh, fantastic robes. Now I'll just say I'm not going to go into great detail of it. Ric Flair loves to party, parties too much, can't separate himself from his gimmick, and Goldust has had a history of substance abuse. Um, so Ric Flair actually emerges from the bathroom wearing one of his famous robes and nothing else so he's naked underneath his robe absolutely trashed um so i'm and, imagining this picture right here he's just letting the boys hang out yeah um and then allegedly uh he does get sued in civil court uh he does get a little grabby with a flight attendant it's a little it goes a little further than that but i'm not gonna broadcast it it was just bad news bears not great um, Bob. not great not great uh, not okay, a good so look. he was going up to them apparently and going woo and opening yeah. his robe. Yeah, no, it was worse than that, but uh, we'll <clears throat> leave it at that. Yeah, we'll leave it. At- um, yeah. So uh, at that point, <clears throat> Gold Dust is also hammered out of his mind, and he's actually on the flight with his ex-wife Terry Reynolds, who everybody knows works for WWE. And so he gets drunk and tells her he loves her, and it's really awkward. And then it gets worse when he grabs the PA system. And starts serenading her in front of everybody. I love it. I don't see a downside to this at all. Um, no, he, no, this probably doesn't go bad at all. This is when Jim Ross gets up and kind of puts an end to it. And then Goldust also gets inappropriate with a flight attendant. So honestly, both these men kind of get inducted to the scumbag hall of fame. Oh, big <laughs> induction. Round of yeah. applause, everyone. Not scumbag a great, not a great look. Fame. Not a great look for both oh, those guys. Big, what a big day for those two. Big induction. Um, uh, then Rick a... Flair's been in the Hall of Fame like four times now. Yeah, that's, that's another ring on his finger. Not a great ring to have. <laughs> so Jim Ross, at, the, at this point, who is also on the flight, is the president of talent relations. He's there for all of this. Wait, so why wasn't he helping Goldust? He did stop him. He stopped no, but him. if he's the president of talent relations, that means he's helping everyone in relationships, uh, right? Ah, yes. Uh, literal. Funny. Okay. I was trying to give you a chance to have a drink, Pat. Come on, man. <laughs> I appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, a very quick hitter, uh, not surprising, knowing his uh, knowing his issues. Uh, Scott Hall, Razor Ramon, um, <laughs> this was is on very, the flight. This is very much like left side, cool dude in high school, right side, <laughs> evil guy in high school. Like, it's the yeah. same person. 
guy who gets to high school and is super cool and then the 20 year old who's still in high school and still yes. thinks he's cool but just looks sad 100 percent. um so at this point because it's an open bar scott hall loves his booze um he doesn't do anything too bad uh but he does pass out in his chair so fast um and the bad part was everyone took turns checking his vitals because they thought he was dead <laughs> oh boy yeah didn't so, he say some stuff to a flight attendant before that yeah he's in the scumbag hall of fame too yeah. Oh, I yeah, better get the kidding. banner. Uh, no, no banner for this. No, one. not so, I feel, I feel like he, he he because he passed out. He saved himself from the Hall of Fame. Yeah. yeah. If, he, um, if if there's not a banner, he's not officially in the Scumbag Hall of Fame. The big, the big incident that I love the most is the. Last I thought one. it was the Brock thing. Mm, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, so almost going through the emergency exit is not the big no. deal? No, this Fantastic. one's more funny. This, we end on a funny note here. Okay. Uh, so the incident number five is with uh, Michael <laughs> P.S. Hayes. Uh, Michael P.S. Hayes still works for WWE at this time. He does, like, booking. He's with talent relations. He's kind of all over the place. He's been with the company. Wears first. the worst suits known yeah, to man. Fashion statement. And I put this is uh, I'm with stupid on Michael P.S. Hayes uh, for a reason. So what happened was... What's the number one rule that we learned in the first slide, guys? Don't pass out. That and... the roads on the screen might not be the literal <laughs> ones on the roads that tra traveled. Uh, so Michael P.S. Hades gets absolutely obliterated, as did most of the talent. This um, guy does not look like someone who enjoys alcoholic beverages. Oh, for sure. he, Michael Hayes is a big jackass on the plane. And he's in a position of power, and he's really being a jerk. And no one can say anything to him because they don't want to get fired. Um, so he's being a dick, and at one point he actually needs to go to the bathroom. Uh, and it is rumored, it has been allegedly said that he thinks he's in the bathroom at one point <laughs> and st almost starts taking a leak on Linda McMahon. <laughs> oh, it's the bosses, it's the bosses yeah. Oh my god, yeah, Vince's wife. He almost pees on her. Um, it's at this point that they kind of get him settled, they put him in his chair, and he passes out. So, enter. One more part of the story. I'm not going to leave it out. So the night before at the Insurrection pay-per-view, JBL has a banger of a match. JBL, John Bra Bradshaw, Layfield, and bleeds. He's He bled from his forehead. Great match. Go back, look at it. So he's bandaged up. And before Michael Hayes passes out, he's messing with JBL and at one point slaps JBL's forehead, <laughs> causing him to bleed through his bandage onto his custom suit. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's at this point... I'd that, probably be very understanding of this situation. It is at this point that Michael Hayes passes out in his chair, which you don't do. So enter Sean Waltman, who is a notorious shit disturber. He grabs a pair of scissors. Is he overrated though, Pat? He's so overrated. He uh, grabs a pair of scissors and proceeds to, not before Jerry Lawler begins giggling like a schoolgirl in high school, he cuts off Michael P.S.A.'s famous ponytail. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. You know That's who enough. really got upset by this? The Young Bucks dad. Because it's like oh, an wow. another ponytail <laughs> died. It, he had a twitch in his hair. His scalp was twitching. He's like, oh, ponytails died. Oh, man. So, yeah, he cuts off his ponytail. And the best part is that no one tells Michael Hayes. Not yeah, well, one when person. you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes, right? Oh, I forgot to, I forgot my last animation here. Oh, this oh. is fun. Oh, here we go. Why isn't it working? There it is. Oh, that's JBL. Oh, they're bouncing And he's JBL. bleeding. Oh! <laughs> oh there it is. JBL so, headshot. So Michael Hayes gets off the plane, and the only time he realizes that he doesn't have that's a ponytail really is when he's, animation. when he's going through customs. And he realizes it when looking into a window that he doesn't have his ponytail. <laughs> um, so they get through customs. That's the end of the plane ride from hell. There's a lot of aftermath to this, but the best part, I think, with Pat, Michael I think, can we call it fallout? Fallout, sure. For numerous fallout, reasons. Yeah. 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 Okay. So the fallout from this Thank you. is as follows. Um, Mr. Perfect is fired and shortly passes away after. So is That's this, sad. do you think this was one of those, like, you know, like, you know, when you stop doing, like, you know how we sometimes said, like, Ric Flair, when he hangs him up, might not yeah. be long after that. Yeah. I yeah. think it was kind of the same situation. Yeah. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Um, Goldust gets fired, but later returns. Um, Hall is, uh, Scott Hall is actually released, but more so because of the phys his physical state. He was he just, big he's a mess. It. He's a total yeah. mess. Um, also, Scott Hall, along with Ric Flair, are sued in civil lawsuits. 
because the flight attendants. By the flight the scum, attendants. Yeah, the scum, the scumbag Hall of Fame. Um, Jim Ross destroys everybody on his blog. He buries everyone, and rightfully so, um, condemning them for their unprofessional behavior. Um, and the best part is Michael Hayes. He's kind of the butt of the joke at the end of the day because Waltman goes into the boys' locker room the next night and tapes the severed ponytail onto the wall of the rest That's of the That's amazing. That's savage. I love it. It's like, it's like a trophy deer. Say like what you will about Sean Waltman. I think he's overrated as a wrestler. Kind of hilarious what he did to Michael Hayes. <laughs> um, so as you can see, Tales from the Road kind of varies from kind of tame stories, rough stories of actually getting to places on the road, and then wrestlers, they're bored. It's notoriously bored, and they kind of just need to fill the hours. So that's what they do. And the plane ride from hell is kind of a culmination of a lot of bored guys, a lot of tired guys, an open bar, and just so many idiots getting together and kind of ruining everybody's day. Pat, thank you. Thank you for it. Just, was that it? <laughs> That I, would be it. Thank you I very love... much for this wonderful. The addition of PowerPoint has made me so much more involved that I appreciate. I think it very my much. favorite part is that you just went white background, like a fucking grade yes. nine student who I did love this it. three like three hours before presenting it. I the only thing you could do to make me happier is I want all everything in the at one point the images have to draw be drawn with you by hand and MS Paint. Oh yes. So uh, that'll be the end of our uh, our presentation oh, here today. I okay, full disclosure. I just texted the group and said, uh, "Kill the PowerPoint presentation for the close." Thank you for not doing that. Yes. Um. <laughs> so you're gonna like better. you're gonna like and subscribe to our YouTube page. You're gonna follow us on all our social medias: Instagram, Twitter. Uh, you're gonna support local. You're gonna drink local. You're gonna support local businesses. And thank you for listening to my PowerPoint presentation. Um, and we will see you next week on another for another episode of Bros, Bumps, and Beers. <laughs>